drama. Welcome everybody to the post game lobby where I'm joined by the official and top laners Foxy from Rocket and Splice's Wonder as we conclude top lane week and look back on the week that was. And I want to start first off by uh, Wonder and today your series versus Origin. Quite convincing, I would say. Was it a series of trying new things out for you guys? Yeah, I think this patch in general is uh, a lot about trying new stuff. And I think uh, our idea of draft that we had going into the day was different from a lot of other teams. So I think uh, it's fair to say that we tried all the bit of stuff and uh, it seemed to work out. But of course, you can't take a lot from, from games uh, against lower tier teams. So we'll have to wait and see uh, going into our games against uh, HGK and Unicontrol, for example. Yeah, how everything evolves indeed. Do you want to jump in? No, I was just first pick Thresh, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Missed every hook. <laughs> you had the old days. <laughs> well, you definitely had a really good series. You were also player of the series, so congratulations on that once again. <laughs> I, think yeah. I'm actually, Damn. Yeah, I think I'm leading. Am I, I number one? We're going to have we're someone check that. I think I, have, I think I have five out of out six wins. Then you're Wait, leading then. How many games, how many wins do we have? So I detect that you find it quite important as well that you're nah, top of nah, 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 not it's, at all. Every week he's like... All right, yeah, we're yeah, gonna, every week um, I'm like checking. Yeah. Ah. I'm there. Still number one? There. Cool. We're going to look into it. And meanwhile, we're also going to take a look at a series from earlier this week because the Unicorns of Love, they upset H2K in a 2 0 to claim the top spot in Group B. Honestly, who of you expected Unicorns of Love to win? No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, maybe yeah. not. No, 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 no. Uh, so for us, that was kind of a surprise. Foxy, uh, what do you think about that series? What happened there? I think Odomini was too confident that he can be do well in this matchup and it showed that he just needed too much help and couldn't do much. Yeah, that, that was said uh, by Adwami, like I had an off day. What do you think happened in the Renekton Camille matchup, Wonder? Uh, I think, I mean, I can I can kind of like agree on him that uh, coming from scrims, it's maybe a bit different. He thought of it a bit different, but uh, like from this series, I would have thought H2K would win for sure, but it's also hard to judge from because like if you scream unicorns, you you never know what you get, and I feel like HUK has been really consistent lately. But maybe, like you said, they just drop the ball and and they'll look for a bit more uh, consistency in their in their games. Does it worry you, the fish show, that those late game problems, which were a problem before I am, popped up in such an important series, even if it was an off day? Um, I mean, a little bit, but I, I just feel like um, for me, and I guess for everyone watching, is like you want to see the top teams realize what kind of issues they have and then you want to see during the regular season they kind of fix the issues so going into playoffs they don't have it anymore what well, i'm wasn't too worried but like going into playoffs in every h2k series i won't be 100 percent confident they're gonna win the late game for sure uh almost no matter what happens the last few weeks and i think the problem for them was the comp they had in game two with the rumble top lane even with the goal lead was pretty hard for them to play and then against the nautilus top they just like it seemed like they couldn't do anything whenever it was a pure 5-on-5. Five five. And that is still a little bit of a problem, but I, I guess we can say they had, they had an off day. But like you shouldn't have those off days when you play for the first seed in your group, because they might have lost the semi-final. Yeah, I might have left the bye. The yeah. bye, yeah. Like, I think that uh, no to this Rumble game in, uh, specifically, I think uh, the HUK I know would have closed that game out. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of top teams should, should have closed that game out. I think if they had a significant enough lead to, to play the game out and I don't think even they get that hard outscaled if they just know what they have to play for in the game. And they kind of dropped the ball and they got caught off guard by it, like them pretty much going ARAM and like grouping up and <laughs> invading their jungle. And uh, But I still think they should have won that game yeah. and it should have went to a like, game three. Well, Thank that you. is fair. I think we all can agree. But when we talk about improvement, we have to talk about Foxy and about Rocket. Um, pick up wins in both series here in week eight. Of course, Fnatic all the way back on Thursday. And then today, again, a clean 2-0 and win over Giants. So I'm going to let the Fischio say something about Rocket before we go to the Foxy, because this is also a surprise. Let's put it this way. It's a surprise, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love when a team who is 0-7 plays a 75-minute long game against Origin, uh, manage to win the series, and then they win three other series in a row right after. And actually play pretty good League of Legends, because the series today, like you guys were much better than Giants in, in those two games. And I think that's very impressive. What do you think it was today? Aside from your amazing Gnar. Because the Gnar was amazing. <laughs> I think we just learned how to draft a bit better and play around our drafts better. Like before, we didn't really knew that. The wins definitely help, but yeah, it just drafts. Counter picked up in right now is really good, I think, on red side. I think uh, when it comes to Rocket, like I would have expected them to do a lot better coming into the split as well. I think that 
looking at just on paper, I would like, have expected them to be more, like at least a lot more convincing than Giants. And uh, Fnatic right now is kind of struggling a bit. So it's also like, I would say that Rocket looks the better of the three. And mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of how I've expected it. Uh, like besides Fnatic who, who right now is having uh, some issues, but like, of course the, the NAR helps and he's definitely uh, a contender for best now in Europe <laughs> at the yeah, moment. Yeah, also second to you, of course. I mean, I'm not going to say anything about <laughs> But you're not saying it. That Wonder is feeling good today. No, uh, no he's, he's, he's good on R and uh, it's definitely like a big reason they win the games. Yeah, yeah for sure. So yeah, huge impact. Uh, and well, as you mentioned there, the playoff picture possibly taking a look at the standings as week eight reaches its conclusion. Uh, Orangen now first and foremost officially mathematically locked into the promotion tournament and then H2K, Misfits, Unicorns of Love, G2. Only teams locked in the playoffs. But as you mentioned there, Fnatic struggling, Rock Ad on the way up. Um, we talked to Foxy about it before as well, if it was possible. And you say, of course, it all hinges on that match versus Misfits. So... Uh, yes. I think... Misfits is a hmm, pretty tough opponent. I, I wouldn't be too confident in that matchup, but definitely if we ha it's our day that day, I think we can take it if it's our day. Do you agree, Fischel? Ooh, I think it's tough. Like, it's hard when he's right there next to me and everything, <laughs> but hard, um... I think Misfits, even on a bit of an off day, will still be better than Rocker. And what about Game 1 versus G2 Misfits? Uh, I mean, yeah, no, I think, I think, I can see Misfits lose a game in the series, but I think they will take it at least 2-1 then, and, and they're going to lock, you know, their second place, and sadly, probably keep Rocket just outside, but again, you guys are obviously going to avoid promotion tournament as it looks right now, which is also really good when you were 0-7, like, two weeks ago, so I'm going to give it to Misfits, almost no matter how yeah. they play. All right. I mean, I think Misfits is a really strong team, and I do think there's ways you can like make them a bit uh, less convincing i think you can do some things around uh, how the top jungle works together mm -hmm. and you can definitely put uh, i feel like alfari on some chance where he doesn't have that much impact as he usually does uh, and in that way you can you can maybe do some things there but uh, of course i'm not gonna sit here and say that rocket is gonna win against misfits uh, or something like that i think they're they're definitely like a, a top a top maybe three team at the moment so we need some facts in our Mm -hmm. Then it can happen. It's still going to get yeah. banned out. <laughs> it's totally going to get banned out. Let's <laughs> yeah. first ban. Uh, but yeah, maybe you guys have something up your sleeve. And it's very interesting that I like that we're talking about this match in this manner now, because only two weeks ago we wouldn't have. And uh, Rocket has just made mm -hmm. incredible, incredible strides. Before we move on, Wonder, you were right. You've taken the number one spot on the Player Ray. of the Series leaderboard <laughs> over Kakao, Sven and Janko. So... We voted for Senkox, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. true, actually. Unlucky. Second game, at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, second game, definitely second game. like he... I mean, it, it was a bit back and forth. I think uh, second game, uh, it was kind of hard for me to do anything because they kind of yeah, had yeah. the tent in top lane and I just had to like, I feel like I played uh, the way that giving up a lot of things and just playing it really safe. I think I played that smart and, and well, but of course, Senkuk's just popped off in the mid lane and I, it's, not my, fun, it's yeah. not my fault that people get solo killed uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> everywhere. So uh, I mean, You did your job. I did my job, I feel like, and I think my team probably did more than enough so yeah and you guys booked the win as for us we will be back on thursday as week nine of the spring split kicks off um as we have splice versus vitality up then g2 versus giants will be thursday it, it looks like more of a clear-cut day but then the rocket versus misfits comes up unicorns of love og it's going to be hard for the bottom teams to get a winter and the fanatic versus giants closer will be very very important oh that'll be super important if Fnatic lose that series uh, obviously i guess depending on how you guys played against misfits if you lose to misfits i think fanatic is pretty safe but still yeah. they obviously want to bounce back because you want to have some wins going into playoffs yeah i mean looking at week, week nine it feels like it's a lot of one-sided matchups i don't I think like, if I have to bet on like every, every team like who wins uh, here and there, I think I would at least get uh, a pretty good percentage right because yeah. I think yeah, it, it looks kind of rough for for a lot of these bottom tier teams at the moment, and I don't think there will be a lot of upsets. But uh, Vitality has Kachai now, maybe they can Ooh. pull something off. Yeah, that's true, they, they looked a lot stronger. I think. Pulling down the wow. We'll talk a bit more about that and continue our top lane discussion with our special guest. So if you're watching us in client, be sure to hit up eu.lolesports.com for the full post-game lobby. <laughs> All right, there we go. Phew, that's out of the way. Let's go. What do you want to talk about, Tafisho? <laughs> 
fist top lane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fist Give me lane. fist top lane. Okay, okay. So first game, Satorius didn't know how much damage you could deal when you got the first blood. Yeah, I mean, I think in general a lot of people have no clue what fist does. <laughs> uh, it's a lot different to when fist top was last meta. Like he had the the dot on the W, and now it's a yeah. lot more burst, a lot more like less. Um, it's a lot more like bursty traits, like short traits you do, and I think he was just not used to it, and and that's probably why that he he got killed. Is it is is it top tier, or is it more? I was testing it, I was just trying. Well, he didn't really know the matchup. Can you say that though? Can, and can you say that? I yes. mean, I think it's I think it's a pick I will play moving forward. I don't think it's it's bad in many ways. I don't think it has a lot of counters. And of course, I'm not going to sit here and give away what counters fists or anything. I'm just going to let people find out or figure out eventually. But I think it's definitely a, a good champ and it has a lot of safety as well and a lot of playmaking potential, everything I like kind of. Good. Stuff. Every top laner is happy with the current meta. Uh, we also asked our viewers at home to send in some questions for you guys with the hashtag ask a top laner. And Chris, he wants to know, what was your favorite top laning meta of all time? Fiora. Um, Fiora. <laughs> I mean, I can say that I didn't play top lane before season four. So I, like in start of season four and season three, I didn't play top lane. So I would probably say like the the meta where a lot of Aurelia was being played, Fiora, a lot of like pretty much uh, last season actually, where you played like you could play GP, you could play Fiora, Aurelia, stuff like that. I think that's a, a really fun and exciting meta. Not not like Tank Echo, even though Tank Echo is probably one of the funniest yeah. tanks to play, but Poppy. Maokai, all these champs, I don't... I don't Maokai, know. this... I don't know yeah, where. Maokai, Maokai as well. Yeah. We love some other What about you, Faxi? I'd say top Echo is actually the most fun for me. I really like that champion. <laughs> AP Echo is, is really fun. I think Tank Echo is... Then yeah, it but... It's a bit, but it's still okay to play. The Fervor 24 Echo, I'd say yeah, that, okay, okay, that, yeah. that was really, really fun. Yeah. And obviously, the Fiora Aurelia was also my type. I mean, speed push. I mean, win. I'm waiting for the Fiora. We have the Fizz now, we have the Renekton in there. It's banned. No, it's banned. Or is it bad? Yeah, it's banned. Yeah. It's banned yeah. every game. Oh, it's banned, yeah. Uh -huh. I, think, it. I think Fiora in competitive, it's, uh, it's a champ where a lot, of, a lot of champs in top lane right now and jungle evolves around being able to like dive and you can kind of pressure and push the wave and then dive her. And uh, I, I really don't know how good the champ is. Uh, I think it has. Like, of course, it's being played, like, sometimes, um, occasionally, like, in, maybe in Korea or something, maybe, like, uh, a smack would pull it out against the tank or in NA or something. But You can see the poker face. It's like, yeah, if you're yeah. Yeah. terrible, yeah. Or <laughs> disgustingly bad, yeah. I'm totally not going to play it next week. We did hear Trashy week. say in that interview that, you know, when you want to play something, you guys just put your heads together and find out how he can help you and how you can play it, so... I mean, that's basically just me saying, I want to play this. Yeah, then, <laughs> that's what then, it looks uh, like. Yeah, then, then it... Probably doesn't matter what he <laughs> thinks, really. But yeah. Well, the, as to that, Satindari wants to know who is your favorite champion to play in solo queue that is out of meta. Faxi, you mentioned the Echo. Is there any other thing that you uh, really, really love playing? Right now, I'd actually say Fiora is kind of <laughs> out of meta, so I like to play Fiora a lot and Jace a lot. Just these carry champions, kind of. Yeah. I would say. Akali or LeBlanc top maybe. I played a lot of LeBlanc top with Trinity Dude, Falls Jesus. and I really I really want that to come back. That was oh the funniest God. experience. Didn't really. I have like a distant memory of an official game where Soas played LeBlanc top or am I? He played uh, Zix top and you played Talia top. Yeah, they played uh, they played in LMS I think a lot or in China. I think they played a lot of LeBlanc top actually at more than Soas 10 played? games. Maybe so. I, I have a memory of that, but I want to know. At, at that yeah. point, I was playing solo queue and like some some challenger games, national games as well, and I, I played it a bit. But I think that that was a really fun champ to play, and and Akali as well, or something like that. I want to ask you, Faxi, because all all these top players are always talking about you know playing carry, split pushers, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yorick. <laughs> Yorick. After the rework. Nah, no, 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 no. Okay, so what is wrong no. with Yorick? What does he need? What does he need? Because he's a pure split no, pusher. No, it's no. Fun, fun spells, maybe. Okay, okay. Fun maybe spells. some mobility. Fair, some he's pretty, jumps, pretty slow, like, yeah. Actually, I could, I could compare Yorick a bit to Trundle, I guess, in yeah. a way. It's, it's, I mean, if, do you really need to play this champ? Man? Can, can it just get nerfed and maybe... It's just to spend so much time reworking him and then Yorick no one wants support, to use him. Trundle support, that's fun. I just want to see someone use his ult in competitive. The problem is he's just like... Oh, yeah. Everything else is just pretty useless. No, but his, his old ult was more fun. Yeah, that was watch, better, no? obviously. That was, better. That, was, like, that was funnier to watch, I think. So no one plays Oregon High Heels solo mm. 
No. I don't, I don't think, I, think I, saw, I saw the play in NA a bit, in NA challenge, like uh, the challenge is all the queue, but mm. I looked at it and I was like, nah, these guys mm, are no, no. just bad. <laughs> like the laning is even is worse than before, so you're not even that lane abuser that always was, you know, like abusing lane really hard. Mm. Now you even lose lane, like okay. it's just I, even I worse. I can't lie, I've played Yorick a bit, okay? See, so, I knew, I knew. So <laughs> I, I know that it's the reworked one is better against melee matchups, so like, but the older one was better against like range matchups because he had his goals, Good, you could yeah, just yeah. like, he would get life and slow them and stuff like that, but you can't really do that anymore, so. Um, if you are that Yorick one trick amazing player, you can tweet at our esports hashtag ask a top laner and tell us what these guys have to do to make it work because mm -hmm. we'd love to know. And maybe one more tweet. Um, Dero wants to know, as a top laner, what do you want the most from your jungler? Good one, maybe. Foxy. Ganks? Attention. <laughs> oh. I don't get much help from my jungler, <laughs> but Maximum. all I want is kind of just some cover. Sometimes when I'm about to get dived or something in bad matchups, that's all I want. Some my jungler. Don't really want him to camp my lane because I know he doesn't like that. So <laughs> yeah, just some cover <laughs> sometimes. Oh, wonder yeah. you mentioned like adaptability that you get the freedom to play what you want to play. Yeah, I think uh, for my jungler, like it depends on on the matchups to play. Honestly, sometimes you need. You just need cover. Sometimes you don't even need to play around your lane because maybe it's like tank versus tank or something that doesn't really snowball as much as maybe other lanes. So I think uh, some wards or something. If you have pressure, I would like my jungler to go up and ward maybe deep in the jungle or something and or maybe dive him if that's a possibility. And if it's not, then that's basically all I need. And I, I feel like I, I would be able to play, play the lane on my own. They're being so nice. <laughs> They're sitting and whining and calling for the jungler yeah, every minute sure. in game. They're like... <laughs> Max Law trashy, top lane, top lane. Max, Max Law is, uh, is, has a fun playstyle right now where he, he likes to farm the jungle. So <laughs> I enjoy to play against Max Law at the moment. Trashy is not allowed to. He has to uh, go camp for lane. He has to go. That's farming as well. Well, as, as long as we're on the topic of social media, Faxi, you were mentioning before that you were kind of, you know, touched by the bad Reddit uh, comments yeah. or the community comments. So I looked up some good ones for you nice. from today. Yeah, a lot of them today. Yeah, Foxy Ooh. is a beast on NAR. I see here Foxy's NAR was a joy to watch, seeing him going ham, um, carrying by himself. Insane play by Foxy. So does that, how important is that to you too? Because you obviously mentioned the bad ones. So this I don't be really boost. watch Reddit that much, but mm. other people tell me what uh, other people, the Redditors write about me, like some I get, in the orange game when I played Gnar, there was a lot of hate, some, <laughs> some funny jokes about my Gnar, so I guess it makes me a bit happy that they like me now, they like my Gnar. Wonder, do you read a, a lot of, do you care a lot about the online comments? No, I, I honestly don't care about, about it, but I, I like to read it just for my own entertainment, because it's always fun to, to read what other people, like, they always know the answer, like, going to go for the soul. Of course, they're challenger. Yeah, yeah, they're all challenger <laughs> in there, and uh, and they like to, to, to know what, what I do wrong, and especially in, in Spring Split, my first split here, I, I, was, <laughs> I was getting flamed a lot, right? But I just, like, I knew what I did wrong myself, and I don't think I needed any Redditor to tell me that, uh, and, like, learn from or something, so I just read it to, to get a good laugh, and then I just moved on and, and played my game. It's mm. about finding a healthy balance. What about you? I have a comment here, actually. Ooh. I didn't like the fish show at first. It sounded like he was chewing a brick, but I'm really warming up to him. <laughs> Great. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I've heard that one quite a few times, how people used to hate me and now they really like me. So I like Reddit right now because All right. there's a lot of good comments in there. Keep it going, guys. Don't <laughs> stop. Same with yeah, it was actually Shocks 29. Oh, no, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, in any case, as the Spring Split playoffs draw closer, it's a very important time for us to turn our attention to the Challenger Series because the teams that will be fighting to take the place of the most underperforming teams in the EU LCS. And for more, here is Medic. Thank you, Shocks. I'm Aaron Medic Chamberlain, and I'm here to break down what's coming up in the European Challenger Series. Two weeks ago, we saw the spring split come to a close, with Schalke Nulfir sitting pretty at the top of the standings, undefeated across the entire split. With five teams battling it out for the last three playoff spots in the final week, it was Paris Saint-Germain, Fnatic Academy, and Misfits Academy that managed to lock in their spots for the playoffs. Tomorrow, we see Schalke Nulfir face off against Misfits Academy in a battle for the first promotion spot. Let's start off this breakdown with a look at Schalke. They've argu arguably been the best team ever seen in the Challenger Series. Without losing a single game, they bulldozed through their opposition and now stand on the cusp of getting back into the LCS. 
Schalke's season has been defined by their impeccable macro play. They ended the regular splits after taking 92 towers and only losing 19. In other words, for every one tower they lost, they managed to take five. Now, Selfie is a player that has always been striving to reach the highest tier of League of Legends play. It's been a difficult road for him, but he has shown signs of brilliance across the splits, picking up double kills early on in a lot of his games. Among the moments of genius, however, we have seen signs of overconfidence. Millennium are the only team that seemed to have stretched Schalke, and they did so by camping Selfie in that middle lane. There are cracks in the armor of Schalke Nullfear, no matter how impenetrable they may seem. Compared to Schalke, however, Misfits Academy's road to the playoffs has been full of potholes. Losing their starting jungler, Kadir, they had to bring in Pride Stalker to fill his role in week two. After a few turbulent games, Pride Stalker and the Misfits began to find their stride. It's never an easy feat to join a team midway through a season, especially when your predecessor has performed so exceptionally well. Pride Stalker took up the mantle as Misfits jungler after Kadir had to bow out. Known as a solo queue terror, he struggled to convert his solo queue fame into on-stage form. When the two teams last met, Pride Stalker found himself ever stalked by the presence of Lulex. If he manages to shake this deadly shadow, Misfits Academy definitely have a shot of taking down Schalke. After Schalke and Misfits square off tomorrow, we'll have to wait an entire week before we find out who will be joining the winners in the promotion tournament. Fnatic Academy, with a revitalized roster, line up against Paris Saint-Germain, the preseason favorites. Our victors will head into the promotion tournament against the two fifth-place teams from the LCS groups, starting on the 6th of April. But the next step on the road to the big leagues starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central European time. Back to you guys on the desk. Thank you so much, Medic. Super interesting there. The best challenger team there ever was. Does Wonder have mm. anything to say about that? I mean, I played challenger series when Origin was there, and uh, oh, right. I feel like uh, th that they might uh, be competing for that. Uh, that's what I think. That yeah. at that time, Origin was, even though they they went nine and one, they lost the game. Uh, I think they were uh, like maybe three levels above everyone else. I think maybe individually. Uh, someone could because we were all solo queue players and we were <laughs> individually we were fine right so we could probably match them a bit but then then mid game came and or even just the rotations early game how they played the map and then uh, kind of just crumbled so origin definitely has had back then more potential than the current Schalke one i feel like like origin's ceiling was much higher that's why also they went all the way yeah, to top four finals. when it when it came to worlds because they had like you know mythy pick is when all these guys um Funny enough though, I remember when Spice was a challenger team and they played the challenger final. Oh. Do you remember that here in the studio? It was a five games? It was five games yeah. and oh, I do it was back with the, the five dragons oh. and we had like, was it, oh, I don't know. Four, four out of five, ga five, four out of five games, games were, yeah. uh, yeah. were five dragons. Nothing happened Best for like control 50 ever. minutes oh and there was just dragons, dragons, dragons. We were like, oh great, Spice is in the LCS now. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, like they do nothing. We started playing at like six and then <laughs> yeah. at 11 or something we were finished and I was like, oh, oh it took forever. Man. I mean, but that's the nature of those games, right? It's so important. Course. It was the right. biggest hit after the games, so I just felt like going home and uh, taking a nap real quick. So, but you made it in. A nap at 11 p.m. You so. could just go to bed, you know. Like, yeah. Technically, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a pro gamer though, so yeah. yeah. I mean, our adrenaline was kind of pumping a bit after that, so maybe sleeping right after is is kind of hard. But mm. yeah. Is uh, nerves a big problem for you, still, Foxy? No, I don't think nerves were really a problem this split. Mm -hmm. I just found myself really confident in my skill. Yeah. So. Do you think Schalke will make it into the LCS without any problems? Or can you see them maybe struggle in a promotion tournament game? I'm not sure. If they're against Origin, they probably won't struggle a lot to get into the LCS. Yeah. What Actually, about Giants? I also think they're better than Giants, yeah. What about Rocket? No. <laughs> they're not going to play Rocket. We're not well, going to play I mean, them. We're running through the yeah. scenarios, Yeah, right? I mean, obviously, it's double elimination. Yeah. So, so let's yeah. say Schalke makes it all the way through. Then the two LCS teams can still either face each other or they face, like, whichever other channel team makes it in. Like, technically, Schalke also has to be in Misfits Academy before they're actually in the promotion tournament. Definitely. So we want to see in the BO5s if they can still... You know, continue to yeah, steamroll. Yeah, the Fnatic Academy uh, up versus PSG. And also, very interestingly, that promotion tournament, it's different from previous years. It starts uh, before our playoffs. So that is three weeks now. So also for a team like Origin, you had a tweet there from Tabs before that said already mentally, like, starting to prepare for that promotion tournament because mm -hmm. it's only three weeks away. Will that make a big difference? I mean, I don't know. It kind of feels like maybe it's a bit easy to just 
focus on on the promotion tournament now since like they, they can't make any they can't change anything in the standings right now so it, it depends on what team you are and what like kind of mentality you have because it, either it could be like it could go really hard down from here because they feel like they're not playing for a reason or stuff like that or they could take this as new motivation that they don't really have to care that much about how it goes in LCS and just focus on on like <coughs> ironing out the problems they have but if like my opinion about <laughs> the the promotion tournament is kind of that Schalke is probably better than the bottom five teams in LCS right now. So that's like Fnatic, Rocket, Giants, uh, Vitality and uh, Origin. So. But we also said that last year, or last bit, I remember, with uh, Misfits, when they were playing. And it was like, yeah, these guys are just going to steamroll everything. Not as good, obviously, as Schalke. I'm not saying they were as good. I, I mean, I didn't agree on, on that either. So. That's fair. Um, it's just like a lot of people like getting on 3-0, everything. I remember there were some predictions like, maybe it's not going to be so easy. They lost to Origin and had to then beat Schalke, obviously, to make it in in the last one and knock Schalke out. Mm -hmm. So it's always tricky uh, when you're on stage. But actually, just Super quick question for both of you guys. No, now, we got time. Oh, we got thing. time? Oh, great. Do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Long question then. Uh, you guys were 0 7, and then you guys last year in spring obviously also had your like losing streaks and you're down in the bottom of the standings. Yeah. You mentioned like with your origin, you just kind of iron out your problems. You don't really think too much about the standings. But like when you're on losing streaks, like yeah. how's the atmosphere like uh, on the team? I assume it's like after every time you lose on stage, don't you just kind of get a little bit more sad and demotivated mm. to kind of work on your problems? So is it just easy enough to say we just need to fix this and then it's good? For us, I don't think morale was a problem. Like we always had high morale in our team. Like even losing streams, like losing SES, I think it didn't affect us that much. Like because okay. well, everyone in the team is like really funny, like the jokes all the time. Like we have a Korean that's joking all the time. <laughs> yeah, so. tell us about Wadid because he <laughs> <it> looks... <laughs> Like he's a really he's funny a guy, a really positive guy. Like, he's the type of guy that would, in a game, right, let's say, a Baron is stolen or something, Maxer doesn't smite it, and what is like, it's fine, it's fine, Maxer, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> it's fine, next Baron will get it. Mm -hmm. He's that type of guy in the team. Who's that type of guy in uh, Spice? Oh, I don't know. Uh, honestly, right now, uh, we are kind of lacking a lot of... Our, our team role is not as high as it used to be, so even though, like, in these games, because... Uh, we played Origin and and it was kind of we we could we could mess around a bit without losing the game. So in in these games we were a bit loose and we said it's fine. We even though they stole Nash, like we we, we will win the game anyway. So so it's okay. But uh, I would say we we all have like a role like that. I think it just depends on the day and like uh, if someone is probably like feeling a bit better in the game and or something, he will be the guy who cheers people up as well. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned morale and Trashy also hinted at it. Is that like the main thing? If you had to say, you know, this is the main difference from last year because we also had the big storyline, you know, all the Danes together then and the friendship prevails and all that. And it's kind of your first year, so you're allowed a bit more mistakes. But now the pressure is really on. I think the main issue right now is that we just struggle really hard to improve. Even though we are winning games in LCS and we are uh, we are doing fine, I, I think we are just we just met with like a wall and we are, we are trying to improve further and expand on like in our, on our playbook and stuff like that and it just doesn't seem to work out or we don't seem to improve at uh, as a fast pace as other teams so it kind of you don't like you don't even have to be the losing team to have uh, a bad morale or mm -hmm. you, you can also be the team that sure you can win against bottom tier teams but you're you're not improving as fast and and that can make you feel really bad as well at, about playing and really make you demotivated, so. Same thing that G2 says, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, you know, if you, if you play scrappy games and everyone is expecting you to win. Like, coming into this, everyone thought, well, everyone, and most people thought Spice would be the G2 of, you know, Group A or Group B, where it's like, it would be yeah. Spice number one and then it would be G2 number one because you guys had that really good summer split and the same players, everything was the same. And then, obviously, it went pretty downhill and now you guys are, I think you're climbing your way back up. Like even if you're saying you guys don't improve as fast as possible, I don't see that huge of a difference between you and let's say a Misfits, a Unicorns and an H2K right now. Uh, maybe you feel the difference in scrims, but I don't see it when you guys are playing at least. No, I definitely think that uh, there's not like the, the widest gap between uh, us and the other teams. I just think that personally we would want to be the best possible team, right? We don't want to look really at other teams and how they do things because uh, of course, every team has issues, right? So not, not every team is going to have a perfect, perfect year or perfect split. So 
we're just looking at ourselves and we feel like we could do better and uh, it, it kind of, it's kind of not working out as we would like it to at least so but it's looking upwards now another victory on the book so we'll see uh, what happens and we'll see you guys all next week as week nine of the regular split gets underway we're going to take a look at the matches again as said at splice versus vitality a lot of very clear cut ones you know excite maybe the fanatic versus giants one that could be an important one and rocket versus misfits which would be a monumental win for rocket in the standings for us though it is time for us to log off as top lane week comes to an end thank you guys very much for joining us here on uh, well for top lane week and PGL. Thank you. Thanks. No problemo. Well, we'll see. And you too. We'll see you at 5 p.m. on Thursday, Central European time, as the EU LCS 2017 Spring Split continues. Have a great Saturday night. Let's see if he can get straight help off this time. He does on the hunt, goes through, and now Giants, it looks like round two. Go fight, go fight, go fight, go fight, go fight, go fight, go fight. They're going to lose for it. It's Jordan picking up Hustle and EQ. Blows the curtain call, but there's no one in the back. Betsy dives in, snaps back. Okay, continue their surge. They will grab game number one, a convincing victory, and a stylish one, too, over Giants. Now Rocket are trying to react as Baxi came in and got a big gnar against the wall. Yarna gets one, Yarna gets two. Giants of Betsy right on top. There's the exhaust. He goes in. Let's see if they can finish the job. Yes, he can. It's Yarna that finishes him off with a piercing arrow. Flash if they weren't in sync with this one. PQ. He's insane now by Foxy. He's going big on this one in mini gnar. Or no, not nearly. That's going to be just enough to finish the Lexus. It's Rocket. No minions required. They're going to take it out. 39 minutes. Two and zero.